Hi everybody. Welcome to Ordinary Differential Equations, the mathematical framework and tools for understanding, modeling, and predicting anything that moves. Hi, welcome back to the final lecture of Chapter 5. In this lecture, I want to talk about the problems at the end of the chapter and what I hope you get out of them if you make an effort to try to work them out. Okay, so the first problem is suppose you have an n by n matrix of real numbers. So if lambda is an eigenvalue of that matrix with eigenvector e, then I want you to show that lambda conjugate is an eigenvalue with eigenvector e conjugate. And then, so these first three problems are really to kind of uh, make you feel at ease with complex eigenvectors. I know when I learned this, I was a little bit um, unsure of the degree of arbitrariness, how much it really mattered. And so this is going to work out a lot of examples to hopefully set your mind at ease. So in problem two, consider these two matrices that define a two by two two dimensional linear system. And I want you to find the solution or the flow generated by each one. Now you solved for the flow generated by a matrix of this type earlier on, if you worked out that problem, and you're going to see how it differs if you swap the signs of the off-diagonal elements. Now problem three is an example that you've already seen. We know that it has two complex eigenvalues. They're complex conjugates of each other. And we, can, we computed the eigenvectors for each eigenvalue. And you can see they're complex conjugates of each other. Now I said to make the transformation matrix, you just take as one column the, the um, real part and the imaginary mark part of one of the eigenvalues. Does it matter which order they go in? No. Well, it does, but over, for conditions about stability and so on, determination of stability and so on, it doesn't matter. Does it matter if I take the complex conjugate of the eigenvalue and make a transformation matrix with that as its columns and which order they go? No, it doesn't. And there are four different possibilities. And I, what I want you to do in this problem is look at all four possibilities and this will be related to <clears throat> problem two, the result you, you get in that. Okay, problem four and five are just solve for the um, solve for the uh, solutions, very much like the examples that we did in this chapter already. Problem five is a saddle point. And I want you to find the stable and unstable subspaces in the transform coordinates and map them back into the original coordinates, as I did in the example. Problem six is computing e to the a for an example where a is non-diagonalizable. In that case, we can break it up into uh, the sum of a diagonal plus a non-diagonal, but a nilpotent. So this has zeros down the diagonal and a one in the off-diagonal element. And that's the significance of that is if you raise in to a certain power, it will be zero, and all powers thereafter, it will be zero. And if you want to get into the details of this type of decomposition into diagonal plus a nilpotent part, the references that I gave you at the beginning of this chapter will are, are really excellent for this type of thing. But it's very involved. There's a lot of linear algebra. And in this course, I wanted to focus more on the dynamics and the ODE issues and just introduce you to many of these issues. So then you compute the expansion. And this is a and then you can compute the exponential series from this result. And you can see here's why 
and vanishing up to a certain point is important. And this symbol here is the usual, I define it on the final bit, binomial coefficient. And so that should give you the canonical form at the that I gave you for this matrix for e, for e to the a at the end of the last chapter. Okay, so enjoy the problems. I really enjoyed uh, the first three when I made these up. And uh, then that ends our study of purely linear behavior. Now we're going to get, talk about what happens to all the structures, stabilities, stable and unstable subspaces, center subspaces, when we add on nonlinear terms. And so there's a lot of fun to, to be had in later chapters. So see you next time. Bye.